Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shilpi here and this class is a continuation of medical emergencies in dental practice. So today we will be discussing how to manage anxious patients in our clinic. So basically the diagnosis of hyperventilation and the treatment for the same. So let's get started with it. So what is hyperventilation? So hyperventilation basically is uh, ventilation in excess of what is required in the body. So basically your partial pressure of arterial blood oxygen which is present that increases by 75 to 100 torr and the PaCO2 that is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood is less than 35 to 45 torr. Then what are the predisposing factors for hyperventilation? So it is basically anxiety. So how to recognize that in dental chair? That is very, very important. So first, when the patient visits to your clinic, any patient, any dental patient, a medical history questionnaire needs to be taken. So any kind of previous history of anxiety or any episode associated with anxiety can be detected. Then Physical evaluation of the patient needs to be done. Vital signs need to be monitored. And in physical ev evaluation, we need to shake the hands with the patient. During shaking, if we observe any kind of cold, clammy hands, that is wet hands, that usually suggests anxiety or apprehension. Also, you can see that the forehead of the patient is usually bathed in sweat and the patient, in spite of the temperature of the clinic being normal, keeps complaining that it is the clinic is unusually warm and the patient feels uncomfortable. Now, what else needs to be done so we need to monitor the vital signs the blood pressure needs to be taken and the systolic pressure rises and it rises more than the diastolic pressure also the heart rate increases significantly and even the respiratory rate increases then coming to pathophysiology so what happens in hyperventilation so there is stimulation of the autonomic nervous system which in turn leads to stimulation or uh, increased adrenaline secretion which in turn leads to the stimulation of the respiratory and cardiac centers which in turn leads to an increase in heart rate, cardiac output and respiratory rate. So what exactly happens is now we'll see in the flowchart. So whenever there is anxiety there is increase in respiratory depth and rate due to increase in adrenaline secretion. There is respiratory alkalosis which is because when the patient is breathing faster at that time more amount of carbon dioxide is being flushed out of the body which results in respiratory alkalosis which in turn leads to increase in blood catecholamines and decrease in the level of ionized calcium in the blood which in turn leads to palpitations, precordial oppression, which is nothing but a, a squeezing kind of pain in front of the chest, then trembling and diaphoresis. Diaphoresis is nothing but increased sweating. Then as a result of increase in respiratory depth and rate, there is hypocapnia, reduced carbon dioxide in the blood, which in turn leads to vessel constriction in cerebral blood vessels, which in turn leads to cerebral ischemia, which in turn leads to the symptoms signs of lightheadedness, dizziness and giddiness, which are associated with hyperventilation. Then signs and symptoms. So basically, there will be chest tightness, there will be feeling of suffocation, feeling of lightheadedness and when the pa there is increased apprehension or increased anxiety, it in turn uh, increases the episode of hyperventilation and when the patient realizes that the patient is hyperventilating, the patient becomes more anxious which in turn increases the intensifies the episode more. So because of that, this forms a vicious cycle then uh, there can be palpitation felts there can be tingling or paresthesia of oral and perioral region and any kind of muscular twitching can also be 
present then coming to the management of hyperventilation so basically it is aimed primarily it is aimed at the management uh, of the anxiety of the patient so it is a duty of the dental staff or the dental team to first calm down the patient then step one is terminate any kind of dental procedure that is going on then step two is uh, positioning of the patient so positioning of the patient uh, in that usually the patient is made to sit upright or the patient can be made to sit in any position that the patient is comfortable in so uh, the main position that the usual position is upright position this is how it differs from the management of syncope so in syncope we were making the patient lie down in supine position with slightly feet elevated and the heart and brain at the same level whereas the, uh, whereas if we need to avoid the supine position in this condition because there is decreased ventilatory volume when the patient is in supine position why because there is impingement of your abdominal viscera on the diaphragm so therefore there is decreased ventilatory volume in the lungs then step three is removal of it's uh, 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 step three is basically management of airway breathing and circulation the, that's been discussed in uh, vasodepressor syncope so that needs to be done and then uh, step four is definitive care so removal of any kind of dental instruments or objects that are present in the mouth the loosening of any clothes the ties the belt and everything so that the breathing can it does not hamper the breathing then we need to uh, calm down the patient and tell the patient to breathe normally so that we bring down the respiratory rate to, uh, to four to six breaths per minute we should try to tell the patient to breathe uh, slowly then uh, uh, then there is management of respiratory alkalosis so what do we tell the patient to do in that we can either give a mixture of 7% oxygen and 93% carbon dioxide to the patient but this is usually unavailable in dental cleaning most of the times so the more practical method is to ask the patient to cup his or her hands you know the mouth he, they should place their hands like this in front of the nose and the mouth so that whatever air is being exhaled can be taken in, taken inside because the exhaled air is rich in carbon dioxide one very very important thing in hyperventilation this is one of the medical emergencies in which oxygen needs to be avoided in in general in most of the medical emergencies the management of medical emergencies we are giving artificial oxygen but in hyperventilation the patient already has excess of oxygen in the blood so we have to basically target to increase the carbon dioxide in the blood then there is management of anxiety so in that midazolam and dizepam both can be given for the management of anxiety and uh, midazolam is preferred more because uh, uh, it does not burn you know when we are giving it im it does not burn significantly so the key points of this class were recognition of uh, an anxious patient then uh, recognition of the episode of hyperventilation and then the management which mainly concentrates on management of anxiety and uh, management of respiratory alkalosis and avoiding artificial ventilation in form of oxygen so these were the key points and that brings us to the end of the class if you have any doubts or queries you can leave a message in the comment section below i'll definitely reply you back and thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next class thank you